In order to understand some of the behind-the-scenes functions of our color picking system, we need some background in color theory first. So I'm going to add a color picker tab really quick. And I just want to go through a little bit of color theory with you so that we can understand what some of these tools are doing under the hood. You can see on my color picker that I have crosshairs that move around, and those are for my chromaticity. And chromaticity is the XY coordinate of colors in a two-dimensional color space. And this happens to be our CIE color space. If we have an additive color system like RGB, red, green, blue, and we plot those on a color space, we'll get a triangle and a plane. So when you have a triangular plane in a color space, you have to imagine that each of the corner points has a string attached to the crosshairs. And as you move those crosshairs around, the length of those strings changes. And so you can only describe every point in the color space that the X and Y can hit with unique values from all three of those points. There's no way to describe the same point with different values from the three points. However, as soon as you add a fourth point to a color space, like RGBA for amber, now you have potentially the ability to describe an XY location with different combinations or recipes of the four different emitters. And this is a phenomenon that we call metamer, two color recipes that are at the same chromaticity. If you were to look at these two recipes on a white wall, the colors would look exactly the same to you. But as soon as you start reflecting the light off of complex spectral surfaces, like fabric or skin tone or scenic paint, then the differences in the content of that spectrum will become readily apparent. When we start looking at color systems that have five, six, or even seven emitters, the probability that you'll be able to describe the same XY coordinate, the chromaticity, with multiple recipes from the emitters becomes much higher. So let's look at a couple of channels that have these systems. I'm gonna grab channel 301, which is an RGBA, and you can see my internal triangle for that color space. There's a location for the red emitter, the green emitter, and the blue emitter, and it's hard to see in this fixture, but the amber emitter is a point on that line as well. If we look at something like a seven color system, you'll see there are a lot of points, and that allows us to get to any of the colors that are inside of that gamut, and potentially using different combinations of emitters. You can see that this fixture has a cyan emitter, and that actually stretches the gamut out away from where the line would go if it just connected straight from blue up to green. Something worth noting is that white emitters don't actually stretch the gamut of a fixture, they just increase the brightness because they live at the center of the spectrum. So systems that are three colors plus a white emitter do not have the increased ability to have metamers. So why do we care about chromaticity, gamut, and metamers? It all comes down to when we want to use our gel picker. And to help in my example, I'm going to add an additional color space in my color picker called my spectrum. As you can see, the spectrum view shows me where all of my emitters are in the visible spectrum and what their current values are. So for example, if I were to take this fixture to R52, it's gonna show me all the emitter composition that it's using to get as close to R52 as possible. You'll also notice that the board has information stored about the spectral power distribution of the gel, Roscoe R52 Light Lavender, and we've represented that on the spectral view with a dotted line. This is the same information that's on the print card behind every gel in a swatch book. And this tells you when light passes through this filter, what spectral content is allowed to pass through. Sometimes using this gel picker, you'll get not so accurate results. And that's because by default, when we go to match a gel, we find all of the metamers of that chromaticity and we give you the brightest one. You can see in R52, my lime is a little bit brighter than where my gel is. And that might shift the color for some costumes or some scenic paint. There's a little tiny button in the very center of my color picker that says that I am picking the brightest of all my metamers. So I'm gonna to touch that really quickly and that will change to spectral. And now when I pick a color, the board is going to find a metamer that is most spectrally accurate 
to what the gel passes. So I'll hit R52 again, and you can see how the composition of that output changes to more closely reflect the output of a gel. You'll also notice in my live channel control that when we're using a spectral match, we'll put a dot in front of the gel in all of the parameters. Oftentimes, the most spectrally accurate metamer gives up a lot of brightness in an additive color system. And so there's a third mode called hybrid, which is halfway between the most spectrally accurate metamer and the brightest metamer. So if I hit 52 again, you'll notice that my composition changes again, and I get two dots in front of my gel match on my live channel display.